Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you for our next generation NCLEX RN pointer set number 45. And without further ado, let's begin. But before that, may I ask your support to join me in this mission, which we've started two years ago. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application review to 100 nurses from our countrysides here in the Philippines. So to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. And we thank you very much in advance for doing that. Once again, don't skip. Okay, so here we go. Our pointers set number 45. So the first question that you need to ask yourself when preparing for the engine is, what are the things that I need to master? And it's not just browsing notes or skimming your notes. It's about concept mastery. And you need an expert opinion to enable you to focus on those things that matter the most. Don't waste your time. Be under the wings of someone with a heart and with the patience and with the brain to guide you. We're here at the Ray Gapos Mentors to do that simply for you because we believe you can turn your dreams to reality. So let's begin with the first concept. So yatal hernia. Now, looking at the picture, what happens in yatal hernia is that a portion of the stomachs would usually slide upward into the chest through an opening in the diaphragm. So it's called yatus. That's why when a part of the stomach, the upper part, slides upwards, through the yatus, and we term it yatal hernia. Okay, so what causes yatal hernia? Remember the risk factors, remember the code CLOP, CLOP. The first one is actually chronic coughing. Then L, you have lifting heavy objects. So this is common among weightlifters. O, I'm guilty, obesity. And P, persistent straining or vomiting. How would you know that you have yatal hernia? Note for the bad symptoms. So bad is actually an acronym. B, A, D. First one, belching or heartburn. Then A, acid reflux. And then D, difficulty swallowing. So what are the things that we can do if we have yet to have surgery to correct yatal hernia? First and foremost, we begin with how we eat. So we need to eat small meals three to four times a day, which simply means that we have to have small, frequent meals. And it's very important for us okay, to remain upright at least three to four hours after meals before we lie, we lie down or lay down. Now, pay particular attention to the fact that we also need to limit fatty foods because fat delays emptying of the stomach. And so therefore, it increases the chance for us to have acid reflux if our stomach contents are stored for a longer period of time because of too much fat, okay? We also need to avoid acidic foods and, of course, those that contain caffeine and alcohol. And since this is associated with obesity, we need to lose weight, to stop smoking, and... In order for us to manage the symptoms properly, we can ask our doctors to consider prescribing antihistamines or antacids for the control of the symptoms, okay? So how will you know that these treatment regimens or conservative interventions are working? Definitely when you have less episodes of belching or less episodes of heartburn, okay? So let's move on to the next. But before that, let me share with you our exchange with Jasmine Abelia. Good morning, Sir Ray. Just want to share po the good news. CSR in po ko. Sobrang maraming thank you sa pagiging instrument niyo po para, para sa American Dream ko. Okay, what she's saying is she's expressing her gratitude and thanking me for helping her out achieve her great American dream. 
And she goes further. Without your guidance, baka hindi ko siya may pasa. May computer shut down at 85. Buti na lang po naging gapos baby ako. Short lang po yung preparation ko ng exam, pero nakaya ko po with your help. Thank you so much to the whole RAGRS. So what she's saying is, she had a very short preparations because we at the Regapos system could have a preparation as short as three days. Call it quick fix. Or if you want 10 days fast um, face-to-face, it's a fast track program. It's called the Quick Fix Bootcamp. And if you want an extensive discussion of all the things that are being covered by the next generation NPLEX RN, so a comprehensive review that lasts for, you can choose to have a 29-day review program or a 60-day review program. It depends on the number of hours you're able to spare on a daily basis to join us in our class live. Okay? And we do that on a daily basis okay so be like her she passed the test through our system now the next important thing that i'd like to share with everyone is actually the complications post thyroidectomy and this is important because one of the concepts that's being covered in the test is reduction of risk potential, which simply means that the nurse to be able to identify factors that could potentially trigger a worsening of the client's condition. And this could mean that we always have to be on the lookout on the development of complications, okay? So the two most common complications post thyroidectomy. the first one, we have your hypocalcemia. Now remember that the normal calcium level is 9 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. So hypocalcemia occurs when the calcium is less than 8 milligrams per deciliter. And the condition is corrected. Um, through the administration of calcium, and of course, to facilitate the absorption of calcium, we need your vitamin D. Now, why do we need to correct the hypocalcemia? Because if the hypocalcemia is not corrected, it could potentially lead to laryngospasm that will make it difficult for the patient to breathe, okay? So that's the first one. The second uh, most common complication of thyroidectomy would be your injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve manifested by hoarseness or dysphonia, in which case when there's hoarseness, there's damage to the vagus nerve, okay? So this can potentially lead to a life-threatening dyspnea. So in essence, it would make it difficult for the patient to breathe. So it's very important also that we need to assess the ability of the client to speak after or if there's a change in the quality of the voice. So we could very well conclude that the patient could be um, having injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Next, bleeding. Um, this could be associated with, of course, the surgical intervention. So the priority is to facilitate evacuation of the hematoma. And how do you assess for bleeding? Slip your hands at the back of the client's neck or the nape area. Why? Because of the principle of gravity, blood usually oozes and flows towards the back. So even if the dressing is dry and intact in front, it's going to be at the, at the back or behind the neck in which you will have some dumpness. And the most important thing that you should never ever forget is to monitor the client's vital signs after thyroidectomy for two reasons. One, if the blood pressure goes down and the pulse rate goes up, then suspect that the client could be having bleeding. But what happens if it's the temperature that goes up coupled with an increase in the pulse rate, so you have fever and tachycardia, then that's when we can say that the client is developing thyroid storm or thyroid crisis, which could lead to atrial fibrillation and then eventually congestive heart failure. Therefore, thyroid storm is a medical emergency. And it's initially treated with a beta blocker like your propranolol, to lessen the activity of the autonomic nervous system responsible for the fever and the tachycardia. And of course, that's followed by the administration of your antithyroid drugs, including your propyl thyrosyl or PTU, and of course your methimazole, or the administration of iodine solution. Now remember, the prevention of these complications begin even before the surgery is performed. 
Now, let me share with you our pastors from all around the world, including a six-year-old who recently passed her test through our system, okay? And of course, let's talk about pyloric stenosis. So let's focus on um, the picture that we have here. So the pyloric sphincter is found between the stomach and the small intestines. When the pylorus, the muscles between the stomach and the small intestines gets thickened or it enlarges, then we have a condition known as pyloric stenosis. Now, the exact cause is not known, but this definitely runs in families. So it's four times more common in boys. And if one male baby had this, the siblings are 30 times at risk to develop the same. So which simply means that if a mother whose baby was diagnosed to be having pyloric stenosis asked the nurse, what is the chance of their next children of having the disease? Then you can honestly say the next children will also be at risk for developing pyloric stenosis, okay? And then there are studies that um, support the findings that pyloric stenosis develops in pregnant women who use antibiotics, specifically erythromycin during pregnancy, or if their neonates um, were given erythromycin because they suffered from upper respiratory tract infection, including whooping calf during the neonatal period. Now, the presence of hernia could also increase the risk for having pyloric stenosis, as well as the sad habits or smoking and um, use of drugs by the mother, specifically your antibiotics. Okay, how would you know that your child has pyloric stenosis? The outstanding manifestation would be projectile vomiting. When you say projectile vomiting, it's a vomiting that's very forceful. In fact, the vomitus could reach uh, a point of four to five feet from where the baby is. So you can just imagine that's a very forceful discharge of vomitus. And because of this projectile vomiting, the baby becomes very hungry all the time and eventually they get dehydrated. And since they are dehydrated, they also get constipated. So the, the intervention for these uh, types of children with pyloric stenosis is to correct the dehydration, give them um, formula every three to four hours. Usually they can be fed within four to six hours after surgical intervention. Now, there's one drug that's used for the treatment of the projectile vomiting, and this could be given orally or through IV. That's your atrophine sulfate. So how would you know that atrophine sulfate is effective in a child with pyloric stenosis? That's when the projectile vomiting decreases. Okay. So the next question that we should be asking ourselves is, how do we study for the test? We need to study with technology. You have to learn how to navigate those questions that are technologically based. And here at the Regapo system, all the learning tools that you need are provided from the computer-based exams to our own learning management system to the books that are usually given as part of our test preparations program. We have NCLEX 311, the one that nurses now are labeling as the holy grail for NCLEX RN. Of course, nursing reminder sheets, and of course, your pharma quick fix in pharmacology. Okay? And I ask one of our passers, Chadel Carmen, which part of our system help you the most? She says all of it from the comprehensive review. Now, the comprehensive review, you have a choice of doing a 30-day program that's five hours a day or a 60-day program that's two and a half hours a day. So if you can spare a shorter time, we have a program for you. If you can spare a longer time, we have it too. If you have long weekends, day off, and you may want to use it for your classes, we also have weekend programs that are intensive and it usually lasts eight to nine hours per meeting, okay? Okay, up to the quick fix session held on Feb 2024. She recently passed. I'm glad that I finally meet you in person and able to attend the quick fix a week prior to my exam. That's the secret of the passers, 
Okay, and of course, you can use our course shells. The course shells cover all the subjects on the NGN from safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion and maintenance, management of care, physio physiological adaptation one, two, and three, reduction of risk potential, and of course, psychosocial integrity, name it, we have it. And the most important thing when you're preparing for your test, you have to be in a conducive environment. And to do that, Join us at the Ray Gapo system. We're the only one with NGN simulation. And of course, very comfortable classes that are being done face-to-face -face either at our own building or some hotels across the country. So once again, I'd like to invite you to join NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN, your choice of live face-to-face -face class, virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, the QBank and the three books, the NGN strategies and sample questions of Dr. Ray Gapus, and of course, our quick fix session. So the fee starts at 3499 So what are you waiting for? Click your phone and give us a ring. We'll be happy to assist you. So this has been your fact check by the Ray Gapos at your service saying a functional concept a day keeps your NGN and clicks fears away. See you in our next video.